boxing. Yeah. Good. Rob Tubbett for Boxing News, joined by Frank Warren. We are here in London following the five versus five announcement yesterday. And of course, Paterbio versus Bivol. How are you, Frank? Been a while? I'm good. I'm good. I'm enjoying myself. Uh, we've having some exciting times the last six months. We've been having some, you know, I think the last year's just been, the last year's been brilliant. <laughs> it's been brilliant. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted. And uh, since... And we've got involved this Riyadh season and doing now the Riyadh originals. Um, it's it's something else. I mean, we you know we're getting all the fights that we want to see and and making real competitive fights. I mean, this show on the first of June is just going to be something extra, extra special. The main event, which um, in some ways is look, <laughs> has been overlooked, it I feel is it's a great fight. I mean, two. Two guys in there, both undefeated. I think it's 20 apiece, undefeated. And uh, with Berbitev, better be of Berbitev, he's, um, he's got the perfect record. 20 fights, 20 knockouts. That is the best record out there. So we're going to see something special there with the four belts on the line. And then we've got a great rival rivalry, uh, hopefully going to be decided, or the first one being decided, with the 5v5. Let's just talk about that. I mentioned to your, I mean, let, let's call it what it is, your promotional partner, Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing, a uh, short while ago. I, I sort of mentioned to him that, you know, it's not just, and I've seen it myself, it's not just for the cameras. I've seen you kind of cordially being around each other. And, you know, as you know, as I said to Eddie, you know, over the years, I've seen you very much at loggerheads over, over that period of time. But this is very, still very strange for me to, to encounter it. But for you, what has this given you as a promoter, kind of having this union? Because... You know, touch wood, everything remains the same. Everything looks pretty good so far. Everything's going swimmingly. Yeah, it's going well. You know, um, my son, George, who's the CEO of Queensbury, he's been instrumental in, in you know, look, I'm not obviously start that again. His Excellency was instrumental in, in basically getting this going. And George has been, um, has developed quite a good uh, rapport. And since I've sort of sat down with it and met, and met Eddie, because I never spoke with him before, since that's happened, um, it's been quite refreshing. And out of it, as I say, we've got this uh, situation developing where we've got this 5v5, and I think that'd be the first of many. Just on that, I mean, I know you've had various promotional partners and promoters that you've worked with in the past. Obviously, Don King, your old mate, Don King. <laughs> Let's move on from that. Um, this something, this with Eddie now, how would you compare kind of this stage of your career working with him to, you know, working with Don in the 90s and working with other promoters at their different stages of your career? It's just a product of the times, isn't it? You know, that's what it is. I mean, you know, when I worked with Don, um, he had, he, he had a, a great di TV deal, an exclusive deal with Showtime, and it suited me to do that. And suited, suited him and suited me and suited our fighters. Our fighters were getting exposure in the States. We were putting good cards together. But it was a different era and it's a different time. This time around, we're in a, you know, we're, we're in a unique situation working together with His Excellency, Riyadh season. And it is, it, it's, it's a different, it's different purse strings to play with. You know, you've got, A, a, a series of events under the Riyadh season that it works from this budget that they it's multicultural it's multi-entertainment it's sports it's it's opera it's you know orchestral it's um, music from around the world not just western music and western values and he's a massive boxing fan so we managed to get these shows put together um, under uh, you know, I have to say under his guidance because he's been he's been instrumental in, in most of this, um, and making shows that we could never do because financially they wouldn't stack up for us, Eddie, or anyone for that matter. So the fans are benefiting from that, and for you know the five v five and 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 that and the unification fight. I mean that is a boxing. It's a dream for boxing fans. I mean, they're really good quality contests. They're evenly matched. They fancy the job. We fancy the job. And uh, and you're going to see some serious action there because there's a tremendous amount of rivalry. 
we've um, we've spoken in the past on numerous occasions about kind of the various different stages of your career. Obviously, you had the Naz Times and Joe Calzaghe and kind of all the success you've had over a period of time. Where does this rank? This kind of little period of the last year or so, there or thereabouts. Where does that rank in in your career? Well, it's it's up there. I mean, I've been doing this for forty seven years now. That's how long I've been in the game, and it's uh, so. What am I in now? I'm coming up to my fifth, sixth, sixth decade. I hope in the game. It's it's exciting times, and 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 you know, at, at the moment, it's all the stars seem to be aligning, and we're making great matches. Great fights are being being put together, um, and it's not just the fights; it also it's what goes on around them. I mean, these promos and things that are coming out. I mean, that they in themselves are. Uh, a mini epics. I mean, they spend on a on a promo what we'd probably spend on a show, and there's something extra, extra special. There is a lot of thought goes into them. The thought process is good, and it's it's, it's exciting times. You look like you enjoyed that one. It was a very, very Guy Ritchie, wasn't it? Well, they've got their themes, haven't they? They've done uh, you know like the the uh, video game things and various, and they and, and they're doing well, and that uh, and they're filmed. The most expensive way you can film. They're all done on celluloid. So the, every sort of eight minutes or whatever it is, they're changing. The, you know, the film runs out, they put it back in. It's good. Obviously not suggesting this at all, but, you, you know, you're not a young man anymore, Frank. You know, Do you ever think of retirement? I mean, I'm sure it hasn't crossed your mind in the last kind of eight or nine months or so. Probably a better way to rephrase that is how much do you think this is kind of... I don't want to say prolonged your career, but does it give you kind of a... Because I, I, I mentioned to you downstairs, and it's something I'll say again, like you, you do look more exuberant. You do look more kind of energised by all of this, and how could you not be, considering everything that's around you? I've always you? been energised. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I've always been worked hard. I've got a good team around me. I'm, I'm not the... I'm, I'm the day-to-day the -day running of businesses with George. Francis looks after and manages very successfully a good group of boxers. He's got a very good for boxes but I enjoy it if I didn't enjoy it I wouldn't do it what's the point if I weren't if I weren't up for this I certainly wouldn't be sitting here I love the sport always have done I've always been interested in all sports since I was a kid I'm a massive sports fan and boxing is my passion and there's you know this and being involved in this is just a joy you know it's like saying to I don't know you might be saying to time to, I don't know, to his age, I can even think of a guy as old as that, like Alex Ferguson, why are you still doing it at your age? You're doing it because he was good at what he did and he enjoyed doing it. And then they got to a moment in time where he'd had enough or he decided he didn't want to do it and I haven't reached that moment. you still got a while to catch uh, Bob Arum. Well, look at Bob. I mean, he's in the, uh, he's, he's itinerary in the next few weeks. He's going to Australia, Japan, uh, Saudi, coming back to the UK, going back to Saudi, then going to LA and somewhere else. And it's the course of like four weeks or something. I mean, it's, he's nine, 92 now, Bob. He's got tremendous energy and loves it, enjoys it, keeps him going. One thing that I've been keen to ask you and really anybody kind of connected to this, I guess, new faction or whatever you want to call it, when it comes down to making the fights, who makes the fights? How are the fights made? What sort of process is it? How is it kind of consulted? We just, we, we, you know... We, the, the, the Usyk and Tyson fight made itself, yeah. didn't it? Because we were trying to do it. And then you look at the undercard and suggestions are made. His Excellency tells us who he likes, what fighters he likes, and we th suggest matches. Or, you know, we'll sit there and say, so you say, right, this is the, this, that, that's the main event, what's going on? I like this one, I like this one, let's try and do this with this one. And then you say, well, no, there's another good fight we can make. And it's a process, but it's led by him. He sits there, he's very, he's very, very... Um, very engaged with it and, and, and very focused on what you know what what he wants what, he, what what he'd like to see on the cards as we all are and we're just between us using all the all of our using our knowledge and our experience and under his under his auspices we all will work together to deliver and that's what's been going on Let's talk about the five versus five. Great fights right the way down from, from kind of the light heavyweight offering to the two at the top uh, heavyweight. Your captain, Hamza Shiraz, obviously been with you for a long time now. Uh, what did it mean to you? I spoke to him and, you know, we spoke to a lot of fighters today. And to be honest, you know, a lot of fighters said, you know, yeah, great team, but I want to win my fight. But when I spoke to Hamza, you could see the look in his face. You could see that he was, you know, proud to have been entrusted that captain's position. How do you feel about that? Well, he's what? Queensbury is all about, you know, young fighters, 
believing in them, helping them to de- de- guide their careers. So, you know, looking at a, you know looking at fights that we hope will bring them on and giving them a platform to show what they're all about. And he's a consummate professional. He reinvests a lot of his his earnings into his career, into his training and, and going to the States to prepare. He's been doing this very successfully. His last couple of fights, he's been phenomenal. Great, great finishing. I think he's a great advert for boxing, for sport. He's the face of modern Britain. Um, he He's smart. He's articulate, and above all, he can fight, and he can can fight, and I think he's one of the best young fighters out there in the world. He's in a tough fight. It's a great opportunity for him. If he wins the fight, which I believe he will win the fight, he then gets, he becomes the mandatory, will get a world title shot, and and I think he's ready to go. And as for the matchroom captain, I don't think I'd ever be saying that Deontay Wilder, not only a matchroom fighter for this fight and potentially the future, but also the captain there. So you go against Deontay Wilder once again, Frank. How many times is that now you've been against? Be the f- I think it's the fourth time. Fourth time? Yeah, yeah, fourth time. Look, he's got, I like Deontay. And he, um, his last fight, you know, he, uh, he just wasn't at the races, was he? He just had a bad night. And there's... I've heard all the different reasons why and why not, and there's always an excuse when you get beat. But I did do know he did that. Was it ayahuasca? Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca, whatever they call it. Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca. He did that, and uh, that I know through a friend of mine whose son uh, went went and did that. It was a bit of a life changing experience, and he certainly he did. There was, there was no sense of urgency in that fight against Joe Parker. And I don't want to take nothing again away from Joe because Joe went out there, set a pace and done what he had to do and done it in great style. So he's in a fight now, which is basically he's going to have a career or he's not going to have a career if he wins it. If he loses it, I should say. That's re- it's as simple as that. So everything's on, on, the, on the line for him. And Big Bang... Well, again, a lovely guy who I like. He's a, you know, he's, he's a, he's a really, really good guy, and he, and he represents the sport in his country really well. For him, he's got a win. He's got to win the fight, and I think, it, I think, you know, he, he's in our team, and I think he will do. Just uh, touching on Joseph Parker, as you mentioned there, of course, a Queensbury fighter now. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think we've missed any uh, famous Joseph Parker call-outs in the last seven or eight yeah, hours that we've been here. They're, they're fantastic. We talk yeah. about production and stuff but, like that. But, he's brilliant. Yeah, but what he's doing is he's getting himself out. It's called promotion. That's what it's about. You've got to go out and promote yourself, and he's doing it, and something good will come out of that now. now he obviously called out Dillian White. He called out Anthony Joshua. You're his promoter. Yeah. What, what plans are afoot for, for Joseph Parker? Uh, we'll be announcing that. Not, you know, in the next couple of weeks, we was talking. I was talking to Spencer last night, Spencer and Brown, and we will out, we'll sort it out. The light heavyweight offering here has Craig Richards against Willie Hutchinson. Now, staying with the light heavyweight division, Anthony Yard, uh, somebody who I know that you've you've had a very close relationship with over the years, and you've promoted him right the way through. Um, it's the first time I've spoken to you well, in a long time, anyway. What happened there? What's going on there? I've only seen kind of little snippets and little tidbits. Yeah. It's been difficult to, to kind of decipher what the situation is, Frank. Well, for me, it isn't. We have a contract. And um, he's been advised that they're out of contract, and that's where we're at. So hopefully we can resolve it without having to do it through lawyers. And somebody in Anthony who I know that you've... I've, 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 it's I've disappointing. S- yeah, aside from the kind you of know, the business side of things, there is the personal element. Yeah, and I do like. I, I, I thought what he did, what he's done for himself and his family, and you know, we work very hard. I mean, you know, he, he wasn't. He, he, this is not somebody who come in who was the Olympic gold medalist or whatever. He had twelve amateur fights, and we're in ten fights. We we. I mean, I was saying to BT. You should be when you're doing your ad commercials for the channel. We want him on there, get him on there, which they did, and uh, that was a belief we had in him. You know, we were making him the poster boy, and you know he's had he's had a, he's had some good opportunities, some good fights, and unfortunately for guys who I think could have beat Kovalov, I think they got I think the tactics were wrong in that first fight, but he could have he could have won that fight, and. He give Babatier the Babatier. He give him his toughest fight he's had. There's no doubt about that, no doubt about that. Um, and 
you know, we, we want to make the Buatsi fight. We've agreed terms with Buatsi. So we'll see where we go with it. Back to the light heavyweight fight on this card. I'm going to try and get through these, Frank. I know you've had a, you've had a long day. Um, Craig Richards and Willie Hutchinson. I spoke to Willie earlier and I said to him, and it was really yesterday when they did the face-off, that I looked at him and I thought, hmm, this isn't 19, 20, 21-year-old Willie Hutchinson anymore. He seems to have grown into the weight a little bit more. He's 25 now, so starting to get that man strength. But still, a big step up against a guy who's competed at the top level in Craig Richards. I think all what you say is right. Look, when he was another guy that I had utmost um, confidence in, would go all the way and... You know, he, he's the most decorated amateur Scotland's ever had. He was the world amateur champion. He came from, came in and had some really good work, wins and everybody was talking about him as being a real hot prospect and then lost that fight. And that was a big shock for me. I think he was shocked, but I was the most shocked person in there, I promise you. And... Um, that was that, and he lost his way a bit. But since then, he's come back. Now he's fighting. He's gone up, and he's 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 got what now four really good wins under his belt. He's in, as you say, with a guy who's fought at the highest level, and 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 held his own at the highest level. So it's going to be interesting. But I genuinely, genuinely believe that he has an opportunity to really show the world what he's about and establish himself. He can't afford to lose. He can't he can't afford a setback. He's got to win the fight, and I think he's capable of doing that. From the five fights, it seems to be the general consensus is that he's got the toughest out out of the five Queensbury fighters. Do you see that? Um, I think they were, I think all of them. None of them are easy fights. They're all well matched fights. They're all very very well matched fights. Fights. I believe we can win them all. I genuinely do believe that because that's what we want. That's why we're in there, you know. And we certainly need to win the the fights that the, the, our, the weight divisions that we've caught we've 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 made. Made, we've called that as being our, our weight divisions. They're all they're all tough fights. They're for me they're winnable fights. They're competitive fights, and I do do believe that our guys will prevail. And I mean that. I wouldn't be surprised if we won every one of them. And somebody else that you've taken from the start up to this point, um, with your ups and downs as well, is Daniel Dubois. Uh, yeah. By all accounts, it looks as though that could very well be his bout with Filip Hergovic for the IBF heavyweight title after Fury versus Usyk. What a massive opportunity for Daniel Dubois, but a very, very tough opponent in Filip Hergovic. He's a tough opponent. And, you know, he turned pro very young. He only had a couple of fights at senior level as an amateur, came into it, and was a hot prospect. I mean, everyone was talking about him. He had that fight, which he was le leading on points. Again, in during COVID, uh, against Joe Joyce, he had that terrible orbital fracture in a three places, and he quite rightly took the knee because the pain of being hit and the nerve pain on there, and not knowing it, but the fact was that he saved his eyesight because you know that that doctor confirmed to us that it had he had carried on, he would have detached his retina, and that would have been the end of his boxing career. So it's a smart move on him. Um, his other losses against Usyk, who beat AJ twice, and he gave he gave Usyk a tough fight. He gave him a tougher fight than most of them <laughs> who ever been in there, and exposed a weakness that we felt was a weak. You know what what was his Achilles heel? He's but the body shots. And I'm not going to debate whether it's a low blow or not and all that. But the four minutes that the referee give that is that is a fact should not have happened because Usyk even wanted to carry on himself and he. The referee did that. And I think he got despondent. I think he was very, very down the way the referee conducted the fight, uh, you know, and kept pulling him up. And he, he, and maybe that was down to experience or what, or lack of experience, I should say. I don't know. But a lot of people said that it showed he was lacking in desire when it comes to it, when it comes to the crunch. But in his last fight, he showed that was not the case. And he gritted his teeth. And, and, and that was I think that was a defining fight for him. So now he's in with somebody who he sparred with when he was younger. I mean, there's a debate whether he was 17 or 20, whatever he was. But one thing's for sure, which you can't deny, is that Ergovic is six years older than him. So he'd only been a kid when he sparred with him. And uh, it was interesting. We'd done a, a, a round table downstairs. And Ergovic said, tell him what happened in the sparring and whatever. And he said, no, you tell him what happened at the end of sparring, what you said, what, what happened. And anyway, it got quite heated and debated. So... There's a bit of um, spice about that one. But Daniel, he's got everything he can. He's, he's got everything any heavyweight would want. He's fast. 
He's got good, he's got good, good footwork. He's good on his feet. He's got a great jab. He's got, he's a powerful puncher in both hands, and he's a good finisher. And his chin's not bad. It's not like he's been caught on the chin and been pole axed or knocked out or took a beating or anything. Um, and he can win this fight by this. That's in that fight, if he does what he does in his last fight and just focuses on what, he, what he's good at doing and just grits his teeth, he can beat Hergovic. And I, I do think he can do it. I wouldn't have put him in there otherwise. Uh, just before we move on and talk about Nick Ball and, and um, Ray Ford, you make a good point there that I wanted to kind of dive into a little bit more about the Daniel dubois Gerald Miller fight. I kind of said after that fight that if you're in the Daniel Dubois business, which of course you very much are, that couldn't really have gone much better. Like he had after about three or four rounds, it looked like Miller was starting to get on top of him. Yeah. Obviously he's a big lump as well and he kept coming and coming. Not only did Daniel bite down on the gum shield and see it through, but he showed he could carry his power late in a fight as well, which as you know, yeah. in any way is, is significant. And once he's got you, once he catches you, you I mean, he sets about yeah. you. Know, I mean, it, it, and he did what he had to do. And it's the same thing with it's, this is what he's got to do in this fight. He's got to be the boss. He will want him, to, he'll want, to, you know, Hergovic will want a counter punch. And everybody I talk to in the business, a lot of the trainers who, who he's trained, who's ever, he's ever sparred with their fighters, they've all said that they've all said he's a massive handful. But I've got to be honest, I haven't seen him do that in the ring yet. So maybe this is the fight. He may be able to do it, I don't know. You know, I just feel that he's. I feel that um, Daniel is capable, and I think he's got to jump on him, and I think he's got to make him know that he's in a he's in a tough, tough fight. And last but by no means least, the only world title fight on the card, of course, the WBA featherweight title yeah. is on the line, not the WBC, because unfortunately, well, it should uh, be a unification fight. Absolutely. Another case for what is happening with his poor judging. You know, I, I was talking to um, Mauricio Sullivan yesterday, and he's quite passionate about trying to change the rules for referees, maybe increase the amount of referees. But I've said to him, what all we want is competent referees. And people who are accountable. If you're a football premiership referee, you get it wrong and you, you, you have a real bad day at the office, you go down. You're going back down to the next league and you've got to show that you're capable and come back. Not be given an assignment the following week to just go on and do it, you know, do it and nobody does anything about that. And that's what's needed, or giving people, I'm not accusing him, I'm just saying in general, or giving somebody a, a, a job, you know, giving them a fight to handle or, re, or judge on because they come from a region where you want to, you know, get your votes or whatever for your, for your organisation. It's got to be the best. You've got to have the best because we're, get, we're getting some strange, some strange scoring of late, which I, I'm really quite amazed with. So... Um, that that thing with Nick Nick Ball was terrible. I mean, it was it, uh, he won that fight, and I was uh, and I've never got a microphone after a, a fight and said to the crowd, "What do you think?" And all the crowd were bloody cheering, you know, booing the decision. But look, Nick's a great competitor. He's a fabulous little fighter. Again, he's a, he's a Queensbury fighter who's come through and done what he's had to do. Um, I love love everything about him as a fighter. He's he's got a tremendous injury, tremendous work rate. He's a, he's a very very good um, offensive guy, offensive fighter. He jumps on you, and he and and what people don't a lot of people don't get about him, he's a hard fighter to catch. He's very good You're inside the way he moves. He slips and slides. He's very difficult. He he makes you miss and makes you pay. And uh, I really want to see him come on and come through on this fight. It's a tough fight for him, but I do believe, I believe he beat the best featherweight in the world in Ray, Varg Ray Vargas. So for me, he's the best featherweight in the world. Okay, well, that brings to an end the five versus five. The only last thing I want to ask you about, something I'm always keen to talk about, and I'm sure you will be too, a certain Moses Itauma. Um what, when's he boxing next? Is he on the Fury card? He's on the Fury card. He's on the Fury card. How excited are you about him? Because if you're half as excited as I am about him, you'd be pretty excited. Well, he is exciting. I mean, my son's son got involved with him, uh, Francis, when he was, I think he must have been about 15 or just turned 16. So he's been, he's not like somebody, he's been on our sort of, 
on our horizons all that time and he's signed with us. I'm very excited. I like what I see. He's, a, he's somebody who's in a hurry. He wants to, you know, he, he, he desperately wants big fights. It's my job and his manager's job uh, to temper that. To, you know, we've got to do it the right way and make the right, like I say to him, you know, the right fights are like the best punches. It's all about timing. So we've got to make sure we make timing right for you. And he's um, he's a he's a quality operator. He's got fast hands. He's strong. He hurts people. He's been up there sparring with Tyson. Tyson thinks highly of him because he's obviously southpaw sparring because of uh, Usyk. And Tyson, sorry, and, and for me, I think he would, I, I do do think he'd go places. And he's got a great amateur pedigree. I mean, you know, when you look at it, world champion, stopped everybody or had everybody on the floor that he fought. Yeah, so the Europeans, he knocked everyone out in the first round and then the Worlds, out, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, I think he battered everyone in the yeah, Worlds. Yeah. Yeah. And as you say, in the, in the Euro, smashed everybody over and, and the European heavyweights are the strongest. But, you know, that's the facts of life. It's all, it's all this side of the pond there. And um, that says a lot about him. And he's, he, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a young man who I think has got a great future in front of him. Will it be world, world titles for him? Obviously, I know he's very young, so the British may not kind of fall into I, place. Will I, it be? I think, I think what it is with him, I mean, it's very easy. It's easy to make, you know, put people into fights, but you want to win them. And at this stage of the game, because of his age, it's not like he's had 10 rounders. He's still, he's still a teenager. He's not a man. He's only 19 a few months ago. So he's still, he's, you know, as he gets stronger and matures, and you can see the difference in the last year, how he's growing. As he gets stronger, and once he starts fighting, not you know, I, I think most people he fights he'll stop because that's the, that's how he is at this level. So if I make a ten rounder for him, if, you know, he stops a guy in four rounds, he stops him, and but at least he's training for a ten round fight, and that's what he needs to do. And if if he'd have had a couple of ten round fights by now, or trained for ten round fights by now, I would put him in with either Fabio. Or uh, Fraser Clark. Clark, I would do that. So he's, he's only a couple of fights off of that. Well, we look forward to seeing what happens with uh, Moses Atam. We're very, very excited by him uh, over at Boxing News. Uh, Frank, always a pleasure. It's been a long time since we've done this. It Hopefully, has. it's not going to be as long before the next one. Well, but thank you. Not. But thank you very much for speaking to Boxing News. It's a pleasure, and I look forward to catching up with you soon. Look forward to it. Thanks, Rob. Cheers, mate. <laughs>